Okay, it's time. Let's uh, get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here to join the Harbor Deep Dive session. I'm Steven Zhou, staff engineer from VMware uh, Harbor Core Maintainer. In today's session, we'd like to talk uh, more about Harbor in the three sections. Uh, first, I'll talk about some key features we delivered in the uh, uh, past release. Then we'd like to highlight some work we are doing and uh, all we are planning to do. In this section, our guest speaker, Daniel Peck from Equal, brings some information about the pluggable scanner, which will be delivered in 1.10 release. And uh, Daniel Jiang will share some details about how to evolve to harbor to the cloud native artifact registry. And last, I'd like to invite our guest speaker, Michael Michael, to share some insights about the Harbor project and uh, the community. Now let's see what the key features Harbor bring to the users in the recent release. The first one I'd like to mention is quota management. Quota management enhances the regular registry operation capability to improve the efficiency of resource allocation and assumption. With this feature, the system we can set quota threshold for each project from two factors, the two to count of the artifacts, including both image and the charts, and the storage size of the artifacts. For the storage, storage size, it's true size by summing the blob size and the minimum size together. One more thing highlighted here, as you know, the image, different image can share some blobs. The shared blobs in the same project will be counted only once. When the quarter is set, once the quarter reaches the threshold, the follow-up push request will be rejected. Under this situation, uh, you can either contact your administrator to request more quarter or delete some uh, outdated resources. The, allocate, uh, the allocated quarter will be freed immediately after the deletion uh, happened. Okay, the next one is the tag retention. As the registry, Harbor is usually used in the uh, CICD pipelines to support the daily work, and then there might be, you know, large scale tags generated every day. The outdated ones should be cleared for the purpose of releasing resource. Tag retention provides a, a you know, automatic uh, approach of cleaning tags from Harbor based on various rules. For the project, you can create multiple rules. For each of the rules, there are three main parts. The first, you can use the double star pattern to specify what repository the rule will be applied to in, then set the condition in several ways. Uh, first, retain always, that means you can retain everything, all based on the pull time in two different formats. The most recent pulled number artifacts you specify here. This is for me to focus on the two to number of retained artifacts. For example, most recent pulled 10, the result will be matched no more than 10 tags, all based with, within the last X days. This is for me to focus on the time. For example, pulled within the last five days. If pulled times of the tags in the last five days scope, they will be matched. Sorry. Based on the push time, it's a similar case to the pull time. Use the push time as a uh, criteria to calculate the rules. And the last, if you want, you can use the tag filter to limit the candidate scope. In the future, we also introduce the label filter to help you limit the candidate scope. One thing I want to mention here, the tags matched by the rule are the retained ones. All the left ones, all the other left ones will be deleted. That's a positive approach. Two ways for you to start the retention policy. Run it immediately or schedule to run after a while. And the education of retention is a destroyed operation. The deleted resources cannot be recovered. So we strongly recommend you dry run before doing the real action. There will be, uh, also, there will also be detailed reports for you to check which ones will be returned, which ones will be deleted, and maybe which ones are failed to clean with a detailed error message. Uh, for this uh, feature, special thanks to our maintainer Nathan Lu from uh, Highlight Software, 
who started the early work? Extensibility. Harbor can plug and play with all your existing investments in infrastructure and identity and the container security. Replication can help you transfer your content to among different registries. There is a registry adapter interface spec for easily extending Harbor to support the replication with other external registries. You can see the list in 1.8. We support uh, Dock Harbor, Dock Distribution, and the Huawei Cloud Registry. And in the 1.9, most of the public registry services are covered like ECR, GCR, uh, ACR, and Alibaba Container Registry Service. In the upcoming 1.10, we will support the Herm Hub, GFOG Artifactory, Qui, and the GitLab Registry. One more thing you should know, most of the adapters are contributed by the community. The next is OIDC integration allows Harbor to leverage uh, OIDC provider to do authentication for Harbor. Technically speaking, at the OIDC, all the OIDC providers follow the OIDC specs should work well with Harbor. However, we still do some uh, verification work to make sure no issues are there. In 1.8, we tried Google Identity, DEX, and uh, PIN Federate. And in the 1.10, we tested also Zero and uh, KickLock. They are all work well with Harbor. Security is always the first focus for users to care about. In 1.10, we work together with Equal Security and Anchor, two companies, to define a standard scanner spec to let Harbor integrate other scanner, not just Claire, to do the security scanning work with a flexible out of tray way. For this part, I would like to invite our guest speaker. Harbor Maintainer, Daniel Pekka from Equal Security to talk about them all. Welcome, Daniel. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay. Yep, uh, thanks, Stephen. So, uh, what I'd like to say, so I'm working as an open source software engineer at uh, uh, Aqua Security, and I recently became the maintainer, and we spent quite some time to make the pluggable scanners available for you in 1.10. Um, so, the main takeaway from this slide is, you know, image scanning is hard. Even though you could find some vulnerabilities, databases, and uh, there's lots of Linux distributions, and uh, every day there's lots of new uh, vulnerabilities found. So if you say it's easy, I would tell you there are better ways to spend your time. Uh, so if you add to that like application de de dependencies, vulnerabilities, it's even getting more hard. So what we've done in uh, this re in, in the incoming release, we, we will give you a choice. You could f go for an open source 3D uh, scanner. You could also reuse existing licenses for Encore, or you could you know integrate with Aqua CSP or any other vulnerability scanner that is out there on the market, right? In order to do that, we extended the uh, architecture of uh, Harbor API. And we introduce like a abstraction layer. It's called the scanner adapter API, right? It's very simple, uh, like uh, three endpoints. One is the metadata. This is where you advertise that the scanner vendor has to implement this, uh, this endpoint to advertise what are the capabilities. So far, we do support uh, Docker images. And we do support the scan report, which is consumable by the, by the Harbor uh, portal. I will show you in a moment how it looks like. Then there are two. Uh, endpoints. One is a scan uh, request. This is asynchronous. So Harbor will send a, a scan request to the so-called scanner adapter. Then the scanner adapter calls the, you know, the actual scanner, and Harbor then is polling for the scan reports. Once we do that, we could show the uh, scan reports. This is a scanner registration, the new part of the configuration. So as an administrator, you could register. Uh, new scanners, the Claire will be still there to stay backward compatible. If you choose the option to deploy Harbor with Claire, you will have a default Claire scanner adapter, but then you can your, add your own. As you can see here, uh, the capability sections and produce uh, data just shows um, that, that you could you know, plug in into the Harbor. It's also open for extensibility because we plan to add maybe more scan 
reports, different formats, but so far we take it easy. We will just show the operating system vulnerabilities. Right? So when you do scan in Harbor, you will see a little bit refreshed histogram of vulnerabilities and the list of CVEs. This is, there are not many changes here. But the thing is, you know, the, the results come from pluggable scanners. Right? And just to outline how simple it is and how simple it is to implement your own, well, I said before that don't do this on your own, but for security companies and image scanner vendors, it's pretty easy to plug in. So we encourage everyone to try out and plug in so we have a better and more secure images in the Harbor Registry. This was a joint effort of multiple companies. It started with Elise Rice, she filed an issue, then it was picked up. Thanks a lot, Steven Zoe, for orchestrating this. Lots of patient learning, teaching us how to contribute. And uh, yeah, that was amazing. Also, Ancor uh, team and HP team, they, they worked a lot on POC. So thank you, everyone, for this. And yeah, hope you enjoy the image scanners in the upcoming release. With that, I would like to invite uh, Daniel to talk about OCI registry and the arf artifact registry. So this is more like extensible artifacts that you could store in Harbor. Thank you. Hey guys, um, I, I think a good sign of the growth um, of to indicate the growth of the community is that we have more and more people having the same name. So I'm the other Daniel, and I can call myself Tan, and uh, that's my Chinese name. So I'm a, I work for VMware and a core maintainer of Harbor. Before Michael shows you the whole roadmap, let me zoom in to uh, one item we plan for the future, which is the cloud native artifact, uh, cloud native artifact registry because it will bring some fundamental change to Harbor and I believe it's a big deal. Okay. Um, so let's look at some background first. Um, this is the much simplified diagram for Harbor uh, in the early versions. When we initiated the project, we wanted to manage Docker images only. We built it around the uh, open source distribution registry, added the API for uh, managing, organizing the images, and uh, allow user to assign permission to other users to access them, et cetera. And we proxy the request to the registry v2 API so that we can apply policies by intercepting the request. So for example, when the user issues Docker put, and the interceptor will do checks to like uh, vulnerabilities and uh, we'll return an arrow if the severity is higher than the threshold. Um, later, uh, as Kubernetes thrives, uh, we wanted to expand the Harbor scope to better support Kubernetes users. Um, so uh, we want to provide a similar workflow and authorization model to help user manage and view Helm charts. And the user can use Helm command line to do download and upload uh, charts just like what we do to the um, Docker images. And uh, to support that, uh, we introduce Chart Museum for storing the charts. And similar to what we've done for images, we added the Helm proxy to intercept the request from Helm, <coughs> added the adapter in the code path to make sure we have a consistent permission model and uh, 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 sim uh, similar management workflow. So in the UI, uh, un under a project, there is a tab of charts so you can uh, view the list of Helm charts and the uh, admin can assign permission for user to Helm pull and push from Harbor. Um, yeah, this approach works, um, but um, uh, we observe some issues. First, when there's another third-party comp third component, there's the extra work to manage it. Um, we need to worry about configuration, failover, and uh, of course, although uh, Charm Museum is a fantastic software, it has bugs, and we need to handle that too. Additionally, uh, API-wise, because the Charm Museum has a quite uh, different style of APIs from the Docker Registry v2, um, we have to do the translation in the API and transformation in the data structure so that we have a relatively consistent API in Harbor. And due to a lack of good abstraction, and we handle the images and charts separately, 
Um, uh, we, 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 when we add new management features, we, we find ourselves, often find ourselves in the moment like, wait, this works for image, but does it work for chart? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. So in summary, this approach doesn't scale well. If you want to support another kind of artifact, imagine we will do it all over again. Uh, this situation makes us you know, not very happy just like this guy. Um, so um, fortunately, earlier this year, the maintainer of Char Museum, Josh, pinged us and let us know an initi initiative in the community. Uh, the idea is that uh, the way a container image is stored is essentially a manifest with a bunch of pointers to the blobs. Um, this was designed for the layered file system for the Docker container, and it works pretty well. But at the same time, because you can store anything in the blobs, so this format works for any artifacts. Uh, we learned it also from the blog post from Steve Lask, uh, in which he points out that you know, as long as the artifact is packaged in the OCI uh, image format, it can be hosted or managed in the image registry. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the community has developed a tool called Auras. With it, a uh, user can package and uh, push uh, anything uh, in the file system as a single layer of OCI image and push it to the registry. Um, this is also being used uh, as a library in Helm v3. So now you can push a Helm chart to registry directly. Uh, this community is also making progress to define the scope of uh, cloud-native artifacts, uh, how their metadata should be structured, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we had some communication with them in the uh, KubeCon Barcelona, and we found this very cool, because this will help us transform Harbor from this um, to this. So we can see it's much more simplified. We will see the registry as a single storage service. This will be less components to uh, manage, easier for deployment, configuration, and scaling out. And we can have an uh, abstraction layer for different artifacts types. Uh, the different sets of APIs to manage images and charts uh, will be merged into one set of APIs for artifacts. So the compatibility issue, uh, the long existing compatibility issue with uh, index or manifest list in Docker will be solved by this change. Uh, so uh, due to the uh, resource model change in the API on the UI, the chart uh, tab will be removed. It will, there will be more flexibility so that different artifacts, such as images, charts, they can be stored and managed in one aggregated view. And the user can even store uh, you know, uh, images and charts in under one repo at the same time. And uh, there will be an OCI compliant API proxy so that everything packaged in a OCI format can be pushed and pulled from Harbor. Uh, all clients, including Docker, Helm, or Duffo for CNAP, will talk to the same endpoint uh, using the same API. Uh, so because under the hood, uh, it will be the same data structure. Um, when we add support for new artifact type, all policies Steven just showed, like quota management, tag retention, and uh, the cool features like replication, immutability, they will work automatically because they are essentially the same resource. And uh, it will be almost the same robust code path and minimum changes required. Uh, last but not least, we also see this as an opportunity for the architecture to evolve because there's a up one abstraction we will have a more modularized and uh, extensible design. Uh, and as the relationship between the resource and the metadata are greatly simplified, we are gonna store more metadata into the database and there will be significant improvement in performance, especially when you uh, doing pool or getting the tags, uh, the, all the data from database, so it will be much, much faster. And uh, we've been discussing it for a while, and there's a PR opened in our community repo, so more stuff is to be added soon. Um, so please have a look, uh, stay tuned, and welcome to chime in if you are interested in this part. Um, with that, uh, I'll uh, welcome Michael to give us an overview of the roadmap.
Thank you, Daniel. So, uh, you know, the, this OCI registry and the ability to add additional artifacts into Harbor is, is, is huge. Uh, it kind of enables Harbor to kind of transition itself, not only as a container image and a home shell registry, but a cloud native registry. So everything that you guys need to uh, host and build your cloud native apps from OPAs to operators to to uh, to config files, everything that you need will actually be hosted there. So uh, that's really exciting for us, really exciting for the community. And you know, we have a lot of people that are looking forward to that. If you guys are really passionate about that, come into our SIG, come into our, uh, into our meetings and help us kind of uh, make that a reality. So let's take a look at the Harbor Roadmap really quickly. So, so when you kind of think about Harbor, uh, we view it as three separate swim lanes. We view it as a swim lane for management, one for image distribution, and one for extensibility. And Steven Zhao earlier showed you that extensibility chart, which was powerful. We allow Harbor to replicate to anything and everything. We have multiple security scanners that can actually enforce your compliance needs as an organization. So those are really, really big aspects that Harbor enabled. And then the YDC part enables you to federate your identity with the provider that makes sense for your organization. So all of those, that extensibility has been a key part of Harbor right from the beginning. We view Harbor as a tool that you take into your data center, you install it, and we plug and play with everything that you have in there. So kind of going forward in that extensibility route, the OCI work that Daniel mentioned earlier is front and center. That's one of our top priorities for the next release of Harbor is making that a reality. Then, obviously, we want to make, continue making enhancements into webhooks. Uh, webhooks is what allows Harbor to integrate well with your CI CD systems, with configuration management databases, as well as with other workflows uh, for service approvals or anything else that your organization needs to have. Uh, so, today we have a lot of webhooks already available, and as we're adding new capabilities into Harbor, you're going to see an enhancement into webhooks as well. So, you know, for example, we just added the, the work with Aqua and Anchor to be able to uh, have their pluggable scanners uh, enforce compliance over your images. So now we're also adding webhooks that will actually drive the results from that scanning back into some automated fashion so that you can consume them in any way that you want. And then uh, obviously the pluggable scanners that, that was the first phase of our interrogation service. When we kind of started going down that path, um, and it was very timely. Aqua and Anchor were ready to talk about this almost at the same time that we were also ready to talk about this because that was a key part of our, of our, of our vision. But the way we view it is pluggable scanners is phase one. Now that we actually have an interface, we want to actually see some of the vendors start doing additional things like license checking the ability to figure out all the libraries that all your applications are using and catalog them and put them in a, in a configuration management database, or the ability to do uh, any type of enforcement that any corporation wants. The API is open. Anyone can write against it, whether that you're a company or a vendor. And we're going to look to to some of our partners here, like Aqua and Anchor, to enhance that uh, their capabilities to add additional features here. Now, on the image distribution, you know, we know it, you know, as the images are getting larger and larger, and as the number of developers are building cloud native apps is getting bigger, we have customers that have two, five, 10, 20 terabytes of storage on Harbor. Imagine every time you add a new data center, every time you add an edge location, how hard will it be to actually push a certain amount uh, or a certain percentage of those images of those locations? Harbor replication helps a lot, but we're going to enhance that with proxy cache capabilities as well as P2P distribution, uh, starting likely with Kraken from Uber and Dragonfly from Alibaba as the first two technologies that we're going to look to integrate. So that will make it easier for you to distribute your images, whether it's at the edge or in a secondary data center location. And going up top on management, none of this happens if we don't make it easy for you to manage, operate, harbor. And that starts from observability, that starts from having better performance and better scale uh, on Harbor. It, it's all about creating, um, you know, 
things like metadata management that makes it easier for you to, uh, you know, both create your policies, uh, be able to search and find things in Harbor, and more importantly, you know, a lot of you guys are asking us, how do I deploy Harbor in a highly available function? Today we have a home chart, but that home chart only deploys the Harbor pods itself. It doesn't help you on Redis, it doesn't help you on Postgres. So we want to actually continue following the model of Kubernetes and give you a truly highly available installation of Harbor using an operator that will include installing not only Harbor, but all of our dependent components as well. So for example, Bitnami has a home chart for, for Postgres. Can we leverage that into an operator so it can give you a complete picture of, hey, go ahead and deploy Harbor, scale it up, scale it down, get all my connected components to, to talk to each other. And, and the last thing here is that signing policy replication. Um, today, if you sign an image in Harbor, that signing signature is tied to only that specific node that you signed it or the specific installation of Harbor because the URI of your image is tied to the, to the signature. We're actually working with the open source community to figure out ways that we can actually enhance that. So the signature and the ability to sign an image can travel with the image as it gets replicated from one instance of Harbor to another. So these are some of the investments that we're looking into. Uh, obviously, you know, we're not going to do all of those in the next six months, but we're prioritizing them, starting from OCI and some of the image distribution capabilities, and we're going to continue working on them. If any of you guys are using Harbor, in our community repo, we have an issue called how am I using Harbor? Go ahead and come and give us your testimonial. If you have requests for features of Harbor, Go file a ticket because other people will pile on and that elevates its priority in our minds. And obviously, if you feel passionate about something, come and help us develop it. Thank you. So, the, so from the community standpoint, you know, the, the community of, of Harbor has been thriving. We have almost 10,000 GitHub stars, over 200 contributors are contributing to Harbor. Some of them are even doing something as simple as creating a PR or fixing a documentation issue or filing, uh, filing a request. So you can get involved in any way that you feel comfortable. We have maintainers across six organizations that are globally located. Uh, Daniel is our, our, our latest maintainer, so he did a lot of great work uh, in our integration and started contributing more and more into Harbor, and now he's actually the technical lead in one of our featured areas around security. And then, you know, you can see here that we have 20 plus product implementations, a lot of contributing organizations, as well as community members that are either using Harbor or distributing Harbor themselves. And the, the levels of participation, like I mentioned earlier, you can start from the bare minimum. Um, participate in our user groups, come into our community meetings. Um, as you start learning more about the Harbor and you get more familiar with it, you can fix a simple bug. And then as you get better and better at it, uh, we're always looking for more maintainers, more, f more folks that are willing to take ownership of, of Harbor and help us take it to, uh, uh, to, to new levels. All right, and Steven Zhao created this really snazzy slide about collaborating with the team. So, you know, we're available anywhere and everywhere. So you can find us on Slack, you can find us on Twitter. We have two Zoom meetings to accommodate folks in different time zones. So we have one that's uh, very specific to, to Asia as well as European time zones, and we have a US friendly time zone as well. So if you wanna come and talk to us, we meet every other week on Wednesdays. And um, we have also a mailing list on the CNCF list that you can come and post your issues. Um, if you're distributing Harbor, we also have a distributors list that they get advanced notification of security issues. So um, if that's something that's important to you, that's something that you can subscribe as well. And then demo.goharbor.io is a hosted offering of Harbor. Uh, it gets refreshed every couple of days, but if you want a quick Harbor environment to do a demo or check out a new feature, you can go sign up for an account. All right, so before I open it up to for q and I want to mention one more thing. Harbor is up for graduation within CNCF. So we're actually undergoing uh, an active graduation review. Um, that's, that's a really big thing for us. It's a testament of the work that the 
team has been doing. It's a testament of the, of the effort and, and the contribution of our users in terms of taking Harbor and deploying it in their environment. So thank you all if you're using Harbor. Uh, if you're not, please start using it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when it, comes when it comes to the point where the CNCF TOC committee is going to start voting on Harbor, we look forward to a lot of you guys providing your non-binding vote of confidence on top of Harbor. So let's open it up for some Q&A. Thank you. A any questions, just raise your hand. We'll, we'll try also repeat it. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, absolutely. So today we, we basically made the requirement that you can only have one scanner per project, whether that's Claire, which is the building scanner, or, or Ancor, or Agua. But uh, with probably maybe not the immediate next release, but the release after that, we look for uh, adding the ability so you can pick three or four scanners in a project. So one of the things I mentioned earlier, like you can do a, a scanner that will do security and vulnerability testing, and another scanner that might do license checking. So you'll be able to run more than one scanner on a per project basis. What are you guys doing when you're doing the garbage call? Uh, in the on the scanner Daniel, you answer that? Uh, yeah, uh, under the hood there's a process triggering Docker registry to call the GC and yeah, you uh, I assume you have some experience with that. You have to put the registry uh, into the read-only mode, otherwise there will be problem in the concurrent situation. So uh, because we have the proxy, so we can put Harbor into the read-only mode and uh, check when there's no write actions, we start the GC, and after it's done, we collect the logs and show it on the UI. But this is not quite perfect. I know that when there is a large data, the time can be long. And we are you know, actively exploring the possibility that we can have a more fine-grained lock to lock like the layer level. So when you are removing a certain digest of layers, uh, you cannot push these layers, but you can issue right to other layers. And uh, yeah, this uh, e investigation is just started. Yeah, we probably will provide that in the future releases. Yeah, the, the, the big thing there is that there's some um, uh, the freezing period that happens yeah. when garbage collection is, is occurring. That's not necessarily something that Harbor introduces, that's a Docker distribution thing. So we are looking to working with them to kind of minimize that as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we have time for both, so <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On the license checking, we're going to be working with some of our pluggable scanner uh, partners to basically create that. They, some of them have uh, enterprise versions of their free OSS stuff that we talked about that kind of go deep into each of the containers, grabbing all the libraries, basically doing all the checks there, versioning them. And you very likely you'll be able to see that uh, light up from a vendor like Aqua Security or Anchor that will give you that visibility into license enforcement. Yeah, so, so when we actually will have multiple scanners, we, we haven't really nailed it yet, but very likely we'll actually, each scanner will provide their metadata back that basically indicates, you know, different levels of severity, pass, fail, plus, you know, uh, severity. So we're going to add some policy there that allows you to describe what's acceptable to your organization from each of these scanners. So for example, today for security vulnerabilities, it's very easy, right? We say, you know, there's different levels of severity, like critical, high, medium, low, and you say anything that's high, you cannot deploy that container. That's 
very tightly applied to security scanning. Once you actually start doing something else like license enforcement, there might be a simple pass fail. So we'll, we'll create the transactional uh, method of communicating with these scanners, and then we'll create a policy on top of that to enforce it. If they're both the same type of scanner, very likely will allow you to enforce policy. If you say, if I find a high vulnerability on neither of the two scanners, then that container image will not be able to be deployed. So if it's the same type of scanner, your policy applies, right? You say, hey, anything with high or above, don't deploy it. So Claire might not find one, but Aqua 3V will. So at that point, your image will not be deployed. That's right. Question? I, I didn't hear that question yeah. completely. Can you repeat that, please? So when you upload the image, it's scanned. That's right. But then it's OK. Read. Three weeks later, it might not be. That's right. How would you handle this one? OK, so I understood the question. So there's three layers of things that actually we do in that, in that process. And I'll, I'll try to outline them all three. The first one is you, when you actually upload an image into Harbor, you can configure a policy that will be scanned on upload. So that's the bare minimum, right? So it gets scanned once. The second thing is we have a schedule policy that you can actually indicate. You can have Harbor scan it every hour, every day, every six hours. You get to define it, and you tell us how often you want scanning to happen on a per project basis. And the third thing is, you may have already deployed that image, and then scanning comes up at midnight and says, oh, new CV came up. What do I do about it? Then that's where the power of, of, uh, of security tools like Aqua, Anchor, and others comes in, where they have admission controllers and mutating webhooks and, and other capabilities into Kubernetes itself to understand that that same image that you found a vulnerability, you already have deployed and they can help you enforce compliance within the Kubernetes cluster. It, it's something that uh, I'm, I'm thinking about. It's not in the immediate like three to five month roadmap, but that as you know, SOPA and Rego and, and those you, you're seeing more and more users use that for enforcing. Then we'll, we'll look into the for Harbor. Today, a lot of the use cases are all around you know uh, how do I enforce things at the Kubernetes runtime and within the cluster. Um, you can think of uh, things that we can interject with Harbor, like you know use Rego and then go plug back into Harbor to make sure that certain things are compliant. But uh, specifically for Harbor um, uh, and kind of defining what our policy looks like in that is, is, is something that's further down the road. One particular use case I think would be quite useful is be able, like, I want to be able to have an image retention policy where I'm not dropping any, any images I have currently Yeah, that, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I actually, a few months ago, I talked to the OPA guys, and uh, there seems to be one limitation um, because the meta, meta language that they use to write the agent, they cannot grab dynamic data. But maybe now they have made improvement, but in that part, it's something maybe a little tricky for us to integrate with OPA because they can only read from, a, I think they tell me a file or something. We need to. Uh, write the information to one place and Alba can read from that place and that is a little tricky. But yeah, I think that's a valid use case. And if you are interested in driving this, you can write up a PR and we can work on that together. Yeah. But that's a good use case, thanks. The file. Daniel, do you want to answer that? So, could you repeat that? Because I'm just make sure, make sure that I got it. Yeah, so the, those scanners are mostly for vulnerabilities, right? 
Yeah. Uh, sorry. So when we defined the API, we said we don't care. The, we did a few PLC to enable you as a hardware user to use like a, whatever is available on the market, which can read the artifacts from the registry, do the scanning, and report back in a unified format. So now it depends which, form, which scanner you use. Most of those we showed right now, like Trivi, for example, is, is doing operate, uh, you know, OS packages scanning and application dependencies scanning. That's it. But if you look into the Aqua CSP commercial product, it does more. It checks for malware and stuff like that. You have to look around what are the others doing. I'm biased by the company logo. But uh, you could find others. We started with the operating system packages, but it can be extended. The API is ready for that. And I'm assuming at the file system layer, you're really looking for malware or binaries that should or should not be there in your image and everything else. So some of that you can enforce at the CI CD layer, again, using security tools like the ones that Daniel mentioned. But if you also want to enforce it at the image, it starts becoming a little bit more expensive, right? But um, definitely possible. And I think we have time for one more question. There you go. Okay, so, so the only way you can deploy Harbor in a highly available scenario today is using the Helm chart and deploying it on top of Kubernetes. So, <laughs> so essentially, you, if you think about the architecture, like I see it in four layers. Uh, layer one is Kubernetes itself. Your, your Harbor installation, all the different services that Harbor has, like the job service, the API service, the UI, they're deployed as pods in Kubernetes with a service abstraction, so they basically can be scaled out. Then the database um, becomes, uh, it's a highly available Postgres database that you can deploy in the same Kubernetes cluster, outside, or in another Kubernetes cluster. Then you get a highly available Redis cluster that it becomes our key value store. And that could also be in Kubernetes or outside. Then for storage, this is where we actually store the, the files, like the Docker images, the home charts. That can be a persistent volume that can be geo-replicated and made highly available. And then at the front end of everything is an ingress controller, a load balancer, DNS, that you can also make highly available. Excuse me? That's right. Yeah, you be basically using persistent volume case in, in Kubernetes directly to attach the storage into Harbor. And I think we have, I think it's six persistent volume claims that we actually require on Harbor, something like that. Six or seven. Is it more now? I, I mean, more or less. Yeah, more or <laughs> I don't less, count okay. that. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for, for attending. Um, we have meet the maintainer hours on Harbor, so if you guys have more questions, come and find us. Search for it in the schedule. Thank you. Thank you.